Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvelously well. In this episode, we're going to be trying out a brand new plugin released today. It is from Sonable, a great company that we also reviewed the Smart Comp, and this one is called the Smart Reverb. I'm excited because their plugins tend to be very intuitive. So we're going to open it up from scratch and try it out and put it on a mix and try in all the different applications that I would usually use a reverb in. So I hope you're all doing marvelously well. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You can hit the notifications bell and be notified when we have new videos. You can also go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list. There is also a link down here where you can win one of three copies of the plugin. What I have here is a song by Alex Calise, who's a wonderful artist. I'll play you just a little bit of the song. So there's a few instances of reverb in here. There's some on the guitars, there's some on the snare drum, and of course, there's some on the vocals. And I might try in other places. So let's swap out other things we've done here and see if we can beat it and just see how flexible this plugin is. I'm gonna start with the snare verb. Now this is me playing drums. This is what uh, I commonly call the guitar player's groove, that dum dum ga, da da ga dum da, dum 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 ga. Every drummer, knows exactly what I'm talking about. Your guitar player gets on the drum kit and plays this. Except usually you put that extra kick in and you go. I could put it in now just for extra effect. <laughs> I have a reverb on here on the snare. Let's turn it off. There's also a sample on here which has some verb on it. Here it is dry. Cool. So we'll just take a little two bar loop there and let us open up the snare reverb for the first time. Wow, here it is. Let's do this in real time. So it says, welcome to Smart Reverb. Take the tour. So Smart Reverb. Smart Reverb is an AI, artificial intelligence, powered plugin that delivers a tailored reverb by aligning its processing to the characteristics of the input material. The plugin enables you to quickly find a reverb style that fits your vision. At the same time, it offers incredible control in both the time and frequency domain. So let's have a listen and decide what do we want this reverb to be on the snare. I think just a little bit of something warm, not too overly bright, and maybe three quarters of a second, um, but something that kind of adds body and a little bit of mid-range to the snare. I don't like overly bright hissing reverbs, pss, unless you're doing some kind of 80s ballad, that is not what I'm about. So next up, here we got the universal width, color, clarity. This is really interesting. Okay, universal. Get started by analyzing your input signal. Prime the smart engine in your audio material by choosing the profile fitting your audio signal. If there's no suitable profile, universal will work well. Then start the playback and press the record button. After learning is finished, Smart Reverb will have computed a tailored reverb for your signal. You'll immediately hear a difference in processing. Okay, well, if that's the case, let's just solo my snare. Prime the smart engine for your audio material by choosing the profile fitting your audio signal. Okay, so I'm assuming it's gonna have things like snare drums, etc. I see drums, I see snare over here. Okay, you start the playback, press the record button. Once the learning is finished, your smart reverb will have a tailored reverb for your signal. Drag the thumb into the reverb matrix to find your style. Natural, intimate, artificial. So you, it's not like it gives you something and then tells you that's all you can use. Temporal shape allows you to feed the decay curve, decay spread, density. Interesting. I see. So it's just the three different colors. So the decay time there in green, the spread, i.e. how wide it goes, and the density. 
Use a spectral shepherd to make frequency dependent decay adjustments. I like that idea. So you could make the high end disappear quicker or the low end disappear quicker, which in the cases of kick drums and stuff would be nice to have the low end disappearing quicker, wouldn't it? Expand the interactive filter widget to quickly pre-filter your signal. So you can just EQ the reverb down here. Okay, so here's the record function. So let's play this snare into it. Hit record. Okay, so the dry function here is set to 100. Let's take that down to zero because we have this on an auxiliary and let's take the wet up to 100. Here it is muted here on the auxiliary. Bring it in. It's really nice. <laughs> it's definitely got the body I wanted. So let's go here, click on, uh, here's the EQ. Probably come up a little higher, about 126. I'll click on here, turn this into a low pass. Mm, maybe low pass it. So I'm letting the high end basically be cut above 5.3K, maybe a little bit higher. Six. Nice. Now I did say three quarters of a second. Bypass, muted, back in. Probably gonna want it louder. Let's try that in the whole drum mix. Mute it. Nice. Muted, back in. I feel like I could make it longer. Let's mess with the decay. Oh. So making it more powerful in that first part of it. Oh, that's good. Now the spread. Well, you can really hear that wide right at the beginning. I want to go mono. Nice. Now the density. Mute it. Nice. Mute it. And in. I'm going to add some instruments in here. Let's mute the snare reverb. Back in. It's nice. It's not overpowering. I could do more of it. I could make it a longer time. Let's, let's actually do that in real time. Turn it up. Cool. So we did that using the universal setting. Now let's go and tell it it's a snare and see what else it does. I want to see if what it's going to make that do now. So here's the record function. We told it it is a snare. Oh, really deep.
beautiful. I like that. Okay, so there's definitely something to be said for the smart function. Okay, so it's nice on the snare, it's definitely natural. Let's put all these elements together. Enjoying it, really, really good. So let's try it on some other sources. Now I've got acoustic guitars here. They are going to a good old fashioned D-verb, comes free with Pro Tools. So let's hear those. Let's mute that. Let's see how much better we can do it with this. I'm now going to go and get guitar, record, and let's have a listen. Okay, I see it defaults to the 100% dry and the 75% wet, so let's make that all effect and no dry signal. It's nice. I think we could do more of it. I'm going to turn it up. Mute it here. Now I have this crazy guitars playing here. And what I did is I took a DI, distorted it and put it through a reverb. So let's change up that reverb now. Here's a dry DI. Then I've got distortion. And then I've got a stock reverb. And I've got the, that's actually 100% wet because I'm using it to create a whole different kind of reverb effect. Okay, so let's mute that. And let's go and grab the Sonable. Let's go here, select guitar. Whatever that's doing, I really like it. over the top oh there's no spray control because it's in mono of course okay that's great I'm going to pull that down on the other one Nice. It's turning into like an 80s Brit, um, you know, indie track where there's like lots of lexicons and stuff going on. I, I really am liking this. I think the logical place to go now is obviously the lead vocal. So here's the lead vocal. I'm on fire. I'm burning so bright. I'm alive. 
So I have a lot of effects going on there. Let's, let's just mute the delays, first of all. I've got a long reverb. I've got a pitched reverb where I've got it going an octave down. That could be really cool to see what it thinks of that. And then I've got a short reverb. So let's, let's feed the vocal in. Let's do all of these. And we can do a little bit of a comparison shop. So let's mute the deverb here. Let's grab the sonable. Again, before I do anything, I'm going to make it dry, zero, wet, 100%. And I'm going to tell it, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you guessed it, it's a lead vocal. I'm on fire, I'm burning so bright, I'm alive, oh, the very first time I'm on fire. Okay, we can shorten this. I'm on fire. I'm burning so bright, I'm alive, oh, the very f What was I using before? Here's the deverb. I'm on fire, I'm burning so bright, I'm alive, 346 milliseconds. The very first time I'm on fire. Okay, let's go to 346 milliseconds on this. I'm on fire. I'm burning so bright, I'm alive, oh. Definitely nowhere near as bright, but it's probably more in keeping with the track and less high-end issues. Um, let's see how I've got the EQ, how it's defaulting. I'm on fire. Go to the fundamental of the vocal. I'm burning so bright, I'm alive, oh. The very first time I'm on fire. I'm glowing tonight, I am shining, and finally, you're gonna know the Okay, so I can control, if I grab it here, there you go, here's the spread. I'm on fire. Density. I'm burning so bright, I'm alive, oh, the very first time I'm on fire. I'm glowing tonight, I am shining. Thank you again. And finally, you're gonna notice me. Oh, 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 Okay, so let's go back here. I'm on fire. I'm burning so bright, I'm alive, oh, the very first time I'm on fire, I'm glowing tonight, I am shining, and finally, you're gonna notice me, oh, 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 that EQ is really bringing out the breath. I'm on fire. I'm burning so bright. I'm alive. Oh, the very first time I'm on fire. I'm glowing tonight. I am shining. And finally, you're going to notice me. Goes to the water natural. It's interesting on the artificial natural here. Let's try something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into pre-fade here, mute the vocal, but keep the sound going. Okay, now we can really hear what it's doing. See what it's doing to all of the density, decay, and spread. Oh, wow, the width control is fantastic. I think this is really noticeable. The width there is great. Color. Oh, wow. Oh, okay.
Oh, wow. Okay, now I'm loving it. First time I'm on fire. I'm going tonight. I am shining. And finally, you're going to notice me. Somewhere about here. I don't want to emphasize those low mid boosts. Okay, so that's really interesting. Very cool. Let us see what I did here is I pitched down an octave down the vocal, then I put a reverb on it. And I used a similar length reverb, so let's copy that down here. Nice. That's really good. Together. And then I have a Valhalla here. So super wide. Two seconds, basically. Okay, so let's grab the Sonable here. I don't think you're going to have problems figuring this out. It took me a few seconds to figure it out, but you, you'll be fine. I'm on fire. I'm burning so bright. Let it learn. So here's the Valhalla. Here's the Sonable. There we go, the width. This is definitely more twisted and interesting. There you go. All these random kind of like almost reverse delay feel. Love that. Back to here. Okay. Let's hear all of those together. I'm on fire. I'm burning so bright. I'm I mean, essentially, it's too loud. Got a little bit too much going on. It's interesting. I don't want to hear that low octave in there anymore. Now I really like it. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's quickly go back. I'm interested to see what that those acoustics sound like doing the same thing where we mute 
we'll go and put them in pre-fade like such and mute them and let's have a listen to the acoustic reverb nice I think this is going to be very, very, with a capital V, interesting for recreating natural room tones. I really love reverb plugins. They're amazing. However, most of the time they're giving me like the, you know, the Vienna Symphony Orchestra's blah, 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 hall in. But you get what I'm saying. They're always something that's completely over top, unnecessary, when all I really want to do a lot of the times with reverbs is create some space and some depth like we expect, but also make things felt like they're put in a place. Because so often these days, you know, I'm getting DIs, I'm getting virtual instruments, I'm getting things that don't have any spatial feel about them at all. There was a time when everything was recorded with a mic, of course, and you put a mic in front of it, and unless you baffled it down completely insanely, there wasn't a sense of the room there. Some virtual instruments have that. However, a lot of them don't. I can feel with this that it's not about having like complex 55, you know, different decay times going on in some massive great big hall, but I'm feeling like I might reach for this often to recreate natural space. Here's with no reverb. With reverb. Turn it up ever so slightly. Turn it off. Back on. So this is a place for me. Now, you might mess with this. You can download it and try it for yourself. You may have different kind of feelings, but my overall feeling is like this will be the one I'm going to reach for when I want to put things in a natural space. And it looks like you can manipulate it like quite dramatically. Here at the moment, it's in the slap bang in the middle. Let's see if we go more natural. Artificial, intimate, rich, natural, and a bit of everything. Mute it. Back in. Very cool. Yeah, I stand by that. I feel like the artificial sort of changes some of the like high frequency. I don't know what you want to describe it. It makes it feel huh, a little bit more artificial. The natural feels much smoother on the top end. There's obviously a relationship between the density and the spread, etc. that's creating that feeling. I can see myself reaching for this on those kind of situations. Let's think about this. If this was a vocal acoustic, this is the kind of reverb, isn't it? That's a good example, because when you get those multiple, like, you know, early reflections going on and no matter if long, short or whatever it is, it does feel like, eh, this doesn't sound like a real person. Now, let's go here. Vocal on two acoustic guitars. Fade into the background. Every time I spiral down. Hidden so let's create it. Here's just a vocal on its own now with just a short reverb. Fade into the background. 
Every turn I spiral down. Yeah, that feels like Alex in a room singing. Let's mess with it a little bit. Fading to the background. Interesting, it said artificial, but. Every turn I spiral down. Head and hands hot on the floor. No one sees me anymore. Fading to the background. Bring up the width. Every turn I spiral down. Head and hands hot on the floor. No one sees me anymore. One acoustic. Fading to. Make that shorter. Pan this guitar in. Pan the reverb in. So I pan the reverb in now, so the acoustic guitar's not as wide, and now the vocal's down the center. Fading to the background. Really natural. Every tone I spiral down. Head and hands out on the floor. No one sees me anymore. Fading to. Yeah, this is definitely something to reach for when you want to make it feel like it's in an actual room recorded naturally, not sort of like 55 mics getting like, oh, there's a reflection over here. Sometimes I absolutely love the really, really fantastic overblown reverb plugins. And I mean that in a positive way. It's really nice when there's tons of reflections going on and lots of stuff. I tend to find myself EQing really heavily to get rid of some of the, uh, the early pss, 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 pss kind of stuff that's going on. Even with the setting that I like, I might manipulate it quite heavily. This is definitely going to be the reverb I'm going to go for on that natural sound. I'm actually talking to Katie Ferrara. I was talking to her this morning, for those of you that have seen, she's done quite a few videos with us about doing vocal acoustic mixes that people will be able to download and do remixes of and add their own instruments. This will be the reverb we use for that. I guarantee it. We can make it sound like she is there playing the acoustic. It's definitely very smart. Oh. It's called the Smart Reverb. So they have very generously given us three copies to give away. Try out the free trial, but don't forget to enter to win as well. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you do get to try it out, leave your comments and questions below. My gut is, is you're going to come to the same conclusions as me. Obviously, I could play around this for another hour or two, but ultimately, I see how it feels... I don't know, you know, it has natural, rich, all of these different settings, but generally the sound feels very real to me. I feel like I could put this on different instruments in the mix just to find placement, even subtle amounts of this before going into crazy effects and stuff, just so it doesn't just feel like, you know, dry in your face, because that's kind of getting old. Everything you hear at the moment is so limited, so compressed, so in your face, so virtual instrumentized. I'm making up that word. You know, that we're looking for space in our music. Go and listen to some uh, Peter Gabriel. Go and listen to So or Hounds of Love by Kate Bush and just enjoy the depth and the breadth and the width that's in them. You'll see what I mean. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Thank you ever so much, Sonable, for giving us uh, three of these lovely reverb plugins to give away. And we'll speak to you all again very, very soon. So long, farewell, avida, zayen, au revoir, adios.